levels of measurement applied to data, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio levels. So the four main levels of measurement are nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio, which we learn about in this enterprise computing course in order to analyze the data contained within data sets. Understanding these levels helps in choosing the right methods for analyzing data. So we're going to take a look at these four different categories today and obviously align them with their either quantitative or qualitative categories and explain how the data that they're measuring is represented differently between them. So the first one is that of interval and interval is a form of quantitative data. So it provides a data with consistent intervals between values, but lacks an absolute zero point. So that means that the actual measurement of the data, zero is not always the starting point. So examples include year dates like 1990 and 2025. Reason being year zero was not the first year of human existence. Okay, it actually predates that. We're going to the BC era. All right, so there is no absolute zero there. Same with IQ scores, okay? The, the way the values are calculated there and we establish someone's IQ, it has a variation. Though, once again, we can't start at zero there. Zero is not the starting point for an IQ score, okay? No one can have that IQ, it's impossible. And then temperature as well. As we know with temperature, yes, there is a zero value, but we can go below it once again. We can have negative uh, temperatures, which obviously means we're going to freezing temperature categories there as well. So it has a representation there. So that's what we're talking about with interval data. There is no absolute zero point that acts as our specific starting point. Jumping on over to another quantitative method, we have ratio data. So exactly the same as interval data in that we have um, values that we can compare against each other for establishing their meaning. But this time we do have a true zero point. Zero is our starting point, and that's how we classify our actual values. So examples here could include length. If I'm measuring the length of something, I am starting at zero centimeters or zero meters or zero millimeters, and then measuring forward. And from that zero point, I'm establishing the height, the width, the length of whatever I'm measuring. Same with age. We establish my age from the point that I was born. Okay, I'm technically zero then, and then I'm growing up with age. If I'm counting the amount of students in my class, if the classroom is empty, there are zero, then as they walk through the door, one, two, three, four, five, that one makes sense. And then also income. If I'm making nothing, I'm not making any income. But then the point is, I start making income and I start working, I am making more and more money. You can never make a negative income. You can make negative investments and you can get debt, but you can never make a negative income. Income is all about the money you're bringing into your account. So that's the ratio level of measurement. We'll then jump over to our qualitative forms of measurement. And the first one we'll look at here is nominal. Okay, and this classifies data into distinct categories, though without any order. And what we're saying without any order means one category is not superior to another category. So examples here could include just in general, a store that sells products. They sell hats, they sell chairs, they sell toys. They're just different classifications. A hat is not better than a chair or a toy. Okay, that's all subjective. There's a person coming into the store and they specifically want certain products and thus there is more meaning from that context. But as the store owner, the person running the shop, okay, there's just ways of categorizing the products in our store. Eye color, once again, what, you could have preference about what eye colors you like, but in the day, it's subjective. They're just different categories of eye color based on what color the eyes actually are. Vehicles, the RMS classifying cars that are on the road, heavy vehicles, standard cars, boats. Okay, we're just classifying the different categories. And once again, same for blood types as well. Type A, type AB, type O. It's just the different molecular structures of the blood type that's contained within people's bodies. So nominal data is just all about putting things into different classifications based on their type or makeup without any order or one category being superior to the other. This then brings us to our final form of measurement, which is ordinal. There is an order in this qualitative method. So basically one category may be superior to another category. So it represents categories with a meaningful order, but intervals between values are not necessarily consistent because they're not aligned with a value, which is the case with our quantitative methods. So here we have examples such as rankings or rating systems. Okay, so you can be working on something and you're getting evaluated and you might be evaluated as poor, as good or excellent. Okay, there might not be any value structure. It could be just what was observed based on some sort of maybe even written criteria or a checklist like that. 
Okay, so there is meaning to that order, but it's not based on a value. Next is education levels as well, as you just progress through school. Okay, you start in preschool, you go to primary school, then go to high school, then you might go to university or TAFE. So there is a bit of a transition there as you move up with age and throughout your year groups. Okay, there is a specific order. Once again, okay, it might not be one is better than the other. It's just that's the order you do it. Okay, and that is a part of a but larger structure, a schooling structure. And then in the military, okay, based on training and experience, you are given different ranks as a private, as a corporal, as a sergeant. And yes, there are levels of superiority there. Certain people being in charge of other uh, people that are in the army. Okay, the commander then leads the actual other people underneath them. Then they have their own groups as well, who they are in charge of too. And that's the same with almost any workplace. Okay, there's an executive or leadership team, then there's middle managers, and then there's employees on the floor. Okay, and there's a hierarchy in those scenarios too. So they are ordinal classifications of measurement. Okay, where certain categories are superior to others, or we are following a specific order in how they are broken down. And it could be based on a hierarchy as well in how these ordinal values are shown. Okay, so the classifications are meaningful in this case. Okay, they are not all created equally. So I hope this video is giving you an understanding of the level of measurements applied to data. That of interval and ratio, which are quantitative methods, and really the difference between them being, does it start at a true zero point? And then nominal and ordinal as qualitative values of measurement, where essentially is there an order, which is the case of ordinal, or is it just different classifications, which is the case of nominal? So I hope this video is giving you an understanding of the difference between these levels of measurement that can be applied to data.